Naam, mkurukenzi mkuu katika mamlaka ya kudhibiti kawi nchini Kenya Bargoria Kipto amemaliza kuwahutubia wananchi kuhusu gharama mpya ya kawi nchini Kenya. Na ni taarifa nzuri baada ya yeye kutangaza kuwa wale wa Kenya wanaotumia kawi kuanzia Unit sufuri hadi telatini wameweza kupunguziwa gharama ya stima kwa asilimia nne. Tumsikilize bargori ya kipto, akihutubia wanahabari. Um, Tuko hapa leo kuelezea wa Kenya uh, bei na gharama ya stima yenye itakuwa inalipishwa na Kenya Power and Lighting Company kuanzia mwaka huu, mwaka mwaka wa elfu mbili, shirini na sita. Uh, sisi kama mamlaka udhibiti wa kawi tuko na mandate ya kuweza kuangalia na kuchunguza uh, tariffs yenye Kenya Power and Lighting wanalipisha wa Kenya leo tumeangalia tumeangalia kuanzia Oktoba mwaka jana mpaka leo tumeweza kuangalia tuka, tukaangalia gharama yenye Kenya Power inatumia kununua stima kupari, kufanya maelekezi yao na operations yao na tumeweza kuja na tarif yenye itakuwa applicable kuanzia mwaka huu mpaka mwaka 20 mwaka 2026 tunaweza kuangalia the tumeweza kuangalia gharama na tukaweza ku tumeweza kuangalia gharama na tukaangalia na tuka make sure that gharama yenye wa Kenya watalipishwa itakuwa yenye ni ya haki na yenye ni ya usawa kutoka mwananchi mdogo mpaka industry na mpaka wale wako kwa biashara. Asante. So jamanisha nini kwa wale wako uh, wale watu wanamwa unit kidogo ya shilingi 50 shilingi 100. Kwa hao watakuwa na ana afueni kidogo kwa sababu bei ya stima kwao kama unatumia uh, uh, hela kidogo kutoka unit moja mpaka 30 utaweza kupata uh, reduction kwa pesa yenu unalipa kwa Kenya Power kwa asilimia nne. Okay. Sure. Sana. Uh, thank you uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen of the press uh, uh, welcome to the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority we're here today uh, to uh, inform you as the fourth estate and also members of the general public in the Republic of Kenya of uh, the retail uh, electricity tariff review for the period the years 2022-2023 to the year 2025-2026 and this is the fourth tariff control period, effective 1st April 2023. I'm joined here today by my colleagues, uh, my director for economic regulation and strategy, uh, Dr. John Mutu on my right. I'm also joined on my left uh, by Dr. Engineer Joseph Oketch, our director for electricity at the authority, and also our director for corporate services, uh, Mr. Kilonzo as well. I will uh, read out the statement and we can take questions uh, thereafter. The Kenya Power Lighting Company did submit a retail tariff application for the fourth tariff control period on the 31st of October 2022 to this authority for review, and this is in accordance with Section 165.3 of the Energy Act 2019. The last tariff application by KPLC came to this authority in July of 2018 and was approved for a period of one year. The authority issued a core agenda on the approved tariff in October 2018. Since 2018, there have been several changes to the to, to the energy sector, such as the decommission of some of the power plants. We have had macro, macroeconomic parameters change. We have also had changes in the base foreign exchange rate that has been applied, as well as the consumer price index has changed from the tariff review in 2018. In the October 2018 review, the lifeline threshold was reviewed to 100 kilowatt hours from 10 kilowatt hours for domestic customers, and the tariff uh, was reviewed from 12 shillings kilo per kilowatt hour to 10 shillings per kilowatt hour. There was also an introduction of a new lifeline category for small and medium-sized enterprises. Uh, this action had the effect of reducing the annual revenues of KPLC by 6.438 billion, as indicated in a statement which shall be issued shortly. Uh, we did have a revenue shortfall for the domestic category. This is uh, category 0 to, 1 tel 0 to 10 kilowatt hours uh, by 4.3 million shillings monthly and 52.5 52 million shillings on an annual basis. We also had a revenue shortfall for the domestic category between 11 and 100 kilowatt hours or 504.6 million shillings on a monthly basis and a shortfall of 6.05 billion on an annual basis. We also had a revenue shortfall on the 
small commercial category between 0 to 10 units of 27 million 27 million 500,000 on a monthly basis to 330 million on an annual basis uh, cumulatively there was a revenue gap uh, by that action of 536,540,396 on a monthly basis and cumulatively on an annual basis a shortfall of 6,438,484 6 billion 438 million rather 484,750 as a result uh, there was a gap in the revenue requirements for the energy sector in addition there were revenue requirements resulting from new power plants that did not pass form part of the base tariff that came into being after 2018. The authority, however, provided for a mechanism for recovery of these obligations of these commission power plants through the pass-through mechanism. On the 6th of January 2022, KPLC submitted to this authority an approval for an application to reduce the energy charge rates in implementation of a 15% tariff reduction following a recommendation of the Presidential Task Force of the Review of Power Purchase Agreements. This tariff was pre-applicable for a calendar year. This is from January 2022 to December 2022, and this was to allow for renegotiation of power purchase agreements. This 15% reduction further resulted in a revenue shortfall to the tune of 26,303,958,482 shillings to KPLC. Ladies and gentlemen, in terms of the KPLC retailer tariff application in, received by us at the authority in October for the tariff years 2022-2023 to 2025-2026, I shall take you through some of the key highlights. Uh, some of the asks from Kenya Power to us in, were in terms of revenue requirements. KPLC did ask us to increase the revenue requirements in the year 2022-2023 to 195.425 and this is in millions. This was to increase to 203,980.64 million on to 207,219.69 million in the year 2024-2025 and 216,235.93 million in the year 2025-2026. This was the application by Kenya Power. The application sought to recover revenue requirements for meeting both the existing and projected cost of electricity supply in the tariff control period. Uh, this had the following major components. One, the existing committed power generation capacity expansion products, both from Kenjan and independent power producers. Two, the Kenya Electricity Transmission Company Ketrako wheeling arrangements. Three, the Kenya Power's current and future revenue to meet requirements to meet transmission and distribution operations, their maintenance costs, and a return on the regulated asset base. Four was to provide for electrification scheme, actual operation and maintenance cost. The application therefore envisages that a non-fuel average tariff will be adjusted upwards from the base, which is June 2019, from a price of 16 shillings and 95 cents per kilowatt hour, as indicated in a multi-year table, which we shall be providing to you shortly. Kenya Power were requesting for an increase from the current tariff yield of 16 shillings and 95 cents, which is apl applicable currently in this month of billing in March of 2023, and an increase into the financial year 2022-2023 to 19 shillings and 4 cents, and then a reduction in the year 2023-2024 to 18 shillings and 86 cents, a further reduction in the year 2024-2025 of 18 shillings and 16 cents, and a reduction in the year 2025-2026 down to 17 shillings and 94 cents. The overall level requirements was proposed to increase from 195.4 billion in the year 2022-2023 to 216.2 billion in the year 2025-2026 as per Kenya Power's application. The proposed non-fuel component of the tariff uh, was adjusted to the current yield of 16.95. This was proposed to grow in the numbers that are previously indicated. This is an increase of 12.3%, 11.3%, 7.15%, and 5.86% over the years of the tariff control period. The increase in the non-fuel power purchase costs were mainly due to a result of the rebasing of the 2018-2019 yield of the revenue requirements with the new power plants that have since been commissioned. The tariff application by KPLC also premises for a full recovery of the real electrification scheme uh, costs also provide for the maintenance costs of Ketrako's 
transmission infrastructure and assumed a loss factor of 19.9%, 19.4%, 18.9%, and 18.4% in the years 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025, 2026, respectively. I shall then speak to our review as the regulator of the retail tariff application by KPLC. What I've just spoken to is the application and the ask from KPLC. I shall then take you through the process that we have gone through as the authority and thereafter then give you our determination as the authority. We are, as the authority, mandated as per Section 11C of the Energy Act to set, review and adjust electric power tariffs and tariff structures as well as to investigate tariff charges whether or not a specific application has been made for that tariff adjustment. Further, the Energy Act 2019 stipulates that the tariff charge for electrical energy supplied shall be just and reasonable and should enable a licensee, uh, in this case including Kenya Power, to inter alia, one, maintain its financial integrity, two, is to attract capital, three, is to operate efficiently, and four, is to compensate investors fully for the risks assumed. In considering the KPLC's tariff application, and in compliance to Articles 102A and Articles 35 of our Constitution in Kenya, the authority did engage stakeholders in public hearings across the country. The stakeholder hearings saw the delivery of various memoranda, written submissions, and oral representations made on the application made by KPLC. We as the authority took into consideration best practices in tariff setting that emphasize of social equity, economic prudence, and financial viability of sector utilities. With a view to meeting the social policy objective, the lifeline tariff ban has been reduced from 100 kilowatt hours per month to 30 kilowatt hours per month to address the needs of low-income households in society. Accordingly, these consumers will be cross-subsidized by other consumer categories in order to protect the vulnerable of our society. In spite of this reduction, the lifeline ban will still account for 6.3 million customers, representing 71.31% of our total number of customers. This, however, captures the majority of a vulnerable sector in our country at the bottom. The second policy objective is the economic policy objective of a retail tariff, where we seek to ensure that we have efficient resource allocation within the economy, with consumers only paying for prudent, prudently incurred costs by utilities. In pursuit of this objective, EPRA has been keen to have the generation projects prioritized according to lease cost considerations. There's always also going to be a continuous monitoring of sector utilities financial performance in order to ensure there is improved efficiency. The third limb is the financial policy objective, which is to ensure the short and long-term financial viability of sector utilities. This objective is to ensure that utilities operate without financial distress and are provided with the capacity to meet the growing energy demand. This ensures that the allowed revenue requirements are sufficient to meet the cost of prudently purchasing power and expanding investments. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure financial viability, economic viability, sustainable and affordable electricity tariffs, the authority has approved an increase in the revenue requirements from 131 billion, which is applicable currently, to 177 billion, 184.9 billion, 186.9 billion, and 193.7 billion. This is for the financial years 2022 2023, 2023 2024, 2024 2025, and 2025 and 2026, respectively. This will allow for the sector to be able to meet its energy purchase costs as well as to cater for system expansion. In arriving at these proposed retail tariffs, EPRA considered the feedback gathered from various stakeholders, including stakeholder engagements. The result of this review will have an impact on various consumer categories, as illustrated. First is the street lighting category, will realize the greatest reduction of 1 shilling and 88 cents per kilowatt hour from 2025 to 2026, and this is from the current tariffs. This will help us improve on the security in major towns uh, by having continuous lighting throughout the night hours. On the commercial and industrial customers, they will realize an average reduction of one shilling and 15 cents. It will help spur economic activities of manufacturing and lower the cost of production. On the domestic category, we have classified that into the domestic lifeline, which are those customers consuming between 0 to 30, our most vulnerable in society. The domestic ordinary one, this is 31 units to 100 kilowatt hours. And domestic ordinary two are those customers consuming above 100 kilowatt hours. Similarly, for small commercial, we have categorized and designated into small commercial one, 
these are the vulnerable again uh, from a small commercial standpoint consuming between 0 to 30 units the small commercial 2 consuming between 31 to 100 units and the small commercial 3 consuming above 100 units of power in kilowatt hours the domestic life and category will realize a reduction of 4% in the end, end user bills this still represent approximately 6.4 million customers uh, that are customers of the utility KPLC. The small commercial category will realize a reduction of 4% as well in the ordinary bills. The domestic ordinary customer category consuming power being the, with, being the forward looking utility on behalf of the sector shall continue to be sustainable. It shall be able to maintain its uh, financial obligations and will also ensure that there's improved service delivery by refurbishing and upgrading the transmission and distribution system. Further, most of the power plants being commissioned into the system, which are renewable energy technologies, do have zero fuel pass-through costs. Therefore, the increase in the non-fuel component will also be mitigated by a reduction or savings in the decrease of the fuel pass-through costs and the dispatch of the thermal power plants, which we envisage will be replaced by renewable energy technologies over this tariff control period. Ladies and gentlemen, in terms of the emerging issues uh, of this tariff application, and just to highlight some of the areas that we've been able to innovate and to bring about in this tariff review. One, it to support electric mobility, we as an authority have approved a special tariff under the e-mobility category for charging electric vehicles. As of 2022, it was estimated that Kenya had an average of 350 registered electric vehicles, whereas EPRA will continuously monitor the uptake of these electric vehicles and then be able to inform a consumer category from a tariff standpoint in the future. In order to promote the clean cooking initiative and a transition in terms of climate change mitigation, the authority has introduced a new consumer category. This is domestic consumer category two for those consuming between 31 to 100 kilowatt hours of electricity for purposes of promoting clean cooking. Research and cooking experiments through clean cooking by modern energy cooking services in Kenya has shown that only 41 kilowatt our per units on average are used by electric cookers for families which have adopted this mode of cooking. The e-cooking industry, though we may appreciate that it's still in the nascent stages, we do not have sufficient data to have a specific tariff category that we're able to model. We are therefore encouraging our utility KPLC to, uh, to continue to pilot uh, through the time of use tariff these domestic consumers who have smart cooking devices so that then in the next tariff control period, we are able then to have a specific tariff for e-cooking. We have also approved bulk tariffs in furtherance to the provisions of one Section 163 of the Energy Act. This will allow large consumers to buy power in bulk consumers. We have also approved the introduction of a time-of-use tariff for small commercial consumer categories. This time-of-use tariff is a 50% discount on the energy charge rate for customers' categories eligible for this time-of-use tariff. As you are aware, this time of use tariff in the current tariff control period was a preserve of the commercial and industrial consumers. We are now introducing a time of use tariff for the small, uh, the, the, the small, uh, excuse me, we are introducing for the small commercial, uh, small commercial customers a time of use tariff. Ladies and gentlemen, in terms of key performance indicate, indicators, we have approved target benchmarks for the off-taker to achieve over the tariff control period in order to ensure accountability and proper use of resources that are available to them. We'll be able to provide for you the targets, which are annual targets which we intend as the regulator to ensure that the utility adheres to in order to improve on efficiency in their operations. We have approved the... Excuse me, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. In terms of uh, trying to bring this to a close, uh, we will be able to provide... Uh, a comprehensive statement with the graphs of the tariffs that are applicable today. We will also be able to pro pro provide to you the annual levels of the key performance indicators in terms of the customer average interruption index, the system average interruption index, and also the system fr frequency interruption index. We have also just to note that we've been able to look at the system losses and provide for 1% reduction over the tariff control period over year by year on the tariff that will be applicable to the utility Kenya power. In summary, ladies and gentlemen, I shall just take you through uh, the tariff charges as proposed and as approved by us as the regulator. We will have, and I will start with, my apologies. 
ladies and gentlemen, I will just, I will just try and uh, take you through the table with our final approval. On the domestic category, we have segregated the customers into three categories. These are the domestic consumers. You have your small commercial consumers and you also have your commercial and industrial consumers. For the domestic consumers, we've been able to, to segregate this into three bands. One is the domestic lifeline category of zero to, zero to 30 units. The current charge as approved is 10 shillings per kilowatt hour. In the first year of the tariff control period that will be applicable, it will be 12 shillings and 22 cents per kilowatt hour. For the domestic ordinary one, these are 30, those consuming 31 units to 100 units, the current uh, approved tariff is 10 shillings per kilowatt hour. This will be moving to 16 shillings and 30 cents per kilowatt hour. You then have the domestic commercial, cat uh, the domestic ordinary category number two. Those are those consuming above 100 units of power, current between 200 kilowatt hours per month up to a maximum of 15,000 kilowatt hours per month. And they shall be paying in this new category. There isn't an existing rate today, but they will be paying 16 shillings per kilowatt hour. They will also be benefiting to a time of use of 8 shillings per kilowatt hour. This is for night time, recognizing that electric buses and border borders are mostly charged at night. So they will then benefit from a time of use tariff, which will be half of the 16 shillings at 8 shillings. Uh, moving on to the con uh, commercial and industrial category, uh, we do have a tariff today of 12 shillings per kilowatt hour. We shall then, CI1, we shall then have a new tariff of 14 shillings and 70 cents, which also benefits from a time of use tariff of 7 shillings and 35 cents during off-peak hours. We also have a bulk tariff for CI1 as well for 14 shillings and 70 cents. For the CI2 category, we also have currently existingly a tariff of 10 shillings and 90 cents. Uh, they will then be moving on up to 13 shillings and 24 cents, and they will also be benefiting from a time of use tariff of 6 shillings and 62 cents. The bulk tariff for CI2 category will be 13 shillings and 24 cents. On the CI3 category, we do have a currently approved tariff of 10 shillings and 50 cents. This will be going up to 12 shillings and 66 cents in the year 2022-2023. They will be benefiting from a time of use tariff of 6 shillings and 33 cents. There is a bulk tariff for CI3 category of 12 shillings and 66 cents. For CI4 category, we do have a currently applicable rate of 10 shillings and 30 cents. For CI3, this rate will be now 12 shillings and 40 cents in the year 2022-2023. And we do have a time of use tariff of 6 shillings and 20 cents applicable to CI4 as well. For bulk tariff charge, the bulk tariff charge will be 12 shillings and 40 cents for CI4. For CI5, the current applicable rate is 10 shillings and 10 cents. The new applicable rate will be 12 shillings and 12 cents with a time of use of 6 shillings and 6 cents with a bulk tariff as well of 12 shillings and 12 cents. For the CI6 category, this is a new category that we've introduced uh, and you are metered at a high voltage. This is a new category where CI6 customers will then be paying 10 shillings per kilowatt hour and their time of use uh, tariff applicability, which has no limit, which will be at 7 shillings and 42 cents. Ladies and gentlemen, we also have a special economic zone tariff, and this is a tariff to promote industry and manufacturing in our special economic zones, which we set at 10 shillings per kilowatt hour, uh, 10 shillings per kilowatt hour during peak times. During off-peak, we do have a time of use tariff of 7 shillings and 42 cents. Last but not least, we do have street lighting tariff. The current applicable tariff is 7 shillings and 50 cents. This will be 9 shillings and 22 cents in the year 2022-2023. Ladies and gentlemen, what I've uh, just presented to you are the applicable rates as it was in the year 2018-2019. The numbers that I've just spoken to will be applicable in the year 2022-2023. And as you will see in the statement that will be issued to you, these rates then progressively decline over the tariff control period through to the year 2025-2026. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen the time of use as to whether we'll have whether we will have a threshold the answer is yes uh, you may be uh, alive to the fact that during covid a, a lot of those industries and uh, small commercial businesses were shut down uh, they they are not able to meet the thresholds as we start today so we'll be able to work with the utility to look at what their consumption is today 
to then set a benchmark of what the average would be over three months, over six months, so that then we ensure that there isn't a shifting of demand uh, from the day into the night, but this will be for incremental loads. But in terms of what the threshold is today, it is work that we'll still need to do then to establish what will be the base of uh, uh, the entry point in terms of the threshold and then ensure that we don't have the demand and load shifting. Um, I think on the second question from Bernard in terms of uh, whether this 4% will be applicable immediately in this first year of the tariff control period, the answer is yes, uh, because we've been able to segregate uh, the most vulnerable in society, those who are between 0 to 30 units, they will then see a reduction in their cost of power. Uh, those who then are in the middle category in domestic uh, one and domestic two will then be able to carry that load or carry that responsibility on behalf of the less, uh, the least fortunate in society. The question was, uh, I think from John, he was asking a question as to uh, why we are having uh, a reduction over the, over the years, even though the revenue requirements are increasing. We are also projecting growth in uh, demand an increase in the customer base and also in terms of investment some of the investments in terms of shoring up the transmission and distribution system will be implemented in the early years of the tariff control period and you'll then see benefits in the later years of the tariff control period i will allow my colleagues uh, to also add in and chime into that uh, that conversation john in the first year uh if you remember the dg said uh, the first study review was done in 2018 so we do have uh, revenue requirements that have been recovered in the fuel uh, we have six plants that, are, that have been commissioned, and the recovery has been through the personal cost. So now what has happened is that uh, those amounts of about three shillings and 50 cents per kilowatt hour has been put now in the base tariff. And that's why you see it increasing, just to recover. And then uh, what is happening going forward, the fuel cost is coming down like uh, the new, new month where we are going, from eight shillings and 30 cents to three shillings and 90 cents. Uh, because now we are not recovering those revenues in the tariff. They, they, they are in the base, the energy charges. Yeah, thank you. I think DG, that's what I can help. You mentioned you find that the losses, we, we were projecting them to reduce over the period, and that reduction in the system losses, which the consumer bears, it also come down, and that's why there is a reduction in the requirements. Thank you. Also coming, uh, though what I've spoken to are the energy charge rates. Uh, the reduction is on the all-in uh, cost of power, which includes your taxes, your levies, and your pass-throughs is your fuel energy cost, your adjustments. So we will indeed have a 4% reduction to the, least, uh, the most vulnerable in society. This is those uh, between 0 to 30 units. Uh, in terms of the charge rates, uh, what I've spoken to is an increase in the charge rates from 10 shillings to 12 shillings, for instance. Uh, the 10 shillings was what was, approved in, uh, what was approved in 2018, but the actual yield today is 16 shillings and 95 cents across all categories. This is because, as the uh, engineer has spoken to, is uh, you have those additional costs as pass-throughs, you have those plants that have, have been recovered through pass-throughs, which you are now bringing into the base tariff. So overall, there is a reduction, but in terms of the charge rates, uh, there is an increase between what was the energy charge rate applicable in 2018 and what the energy charge rate, will be, which will be applicable in 2022. But overall, there is a reduction in your all-in cost. From what the DG has shared with regard to that question, I just want to to explain that uh, because the fuel, you know, the fuel cost, as, the, as, as I said, is coming down, and then also we are rebasing the exchange rate. Uh, you know, the current uh, ex the base exchange rate that we have was set in 2018, and at that point we are considering 100 shillings and two. So we are rebasing the exchange rate to March 2022, um, and the base exchange rate is one, 114 shillings. Uh, so what you see going forward is that the forex adjustment. Uh, is going to go down and also the fuel is going to go down uh, so those are the, will be the key drivers you, you you'll be seeing and um, again we are not you, you remember also some of the power plants like uh, like the thermal power plants like servo power has been decommissioned so we're no longer going to have it in the system so so going forward you'll see a reduction overall up to the up to the the, the fourth year or what you call the third year period of the of the of the target. So the reduction is in the all in when you when you look at energy charge rates we can also be able to share uh, those numbers. How we have computed them. And on the rebasing of the exchange rate, yeah, you say to hundred and fourteen yes hundred and fourteen. From what we have from hundred and two. Yeah.
Nikiripotia IOTV kutoka mamlaka ya kudhibiti kawi njini Kenya, jina langu ni Ronald Sang.